Hi, everybody. I just wanted to say a few things. Uh, just to disregard the noise outside. It's a rainy day, and there's a lot of political stuff going on on the streets, and the, the crazy birds are over here bothering me. But other than that, uh, I just wanted to talk about, uh, you know, a lot of times uh, beginners will email me, contact me, and ask questions about getting started and what they might need. And oftentimes I want to give them, or I, give, I like to give people the advice that blacksmithing doesn't have to be complicated. Yes, you know, the techniques used for blacksmithing take time to learn and can take many years to master the different skills, but to get started in blacksmithing, it doesn't take a lot. And once you learn proper hammer technique, you can apply that and make a, any number of wonderful items with very minimal tools. So I often, uh, for myself, I like to get collect tools as I need them. I don't, you know, uh, some people would like to have everything before they begin, and that's fine. But I personally think it's better to uh, get stuff as you need it. And in, in my own case, I only have what I use. So, but that's personal preference. The main point I'm trying to make is I think it's better to uh, keep things simple in the beginning and focus on learning proper hammer technique. You know, you might have lofty ambitions to be begin, uh, and you, you want to make maybe Damascus blades or something like that, but it's a step-by-step -step process. Most people are not born with the innate ability to blacksmith. It takes a lot of years of practice. Yes, some people do grasp it quicker than others, but even people like myself, it, it's taken many, many years to perfect my skills, and, and still I'm learning every day. So... Uh, just something to keep in mind. Uh, as far as my workspace here, I'm, I'm still improving that and I'm making, <clears throat> I'm making a base for these anvils. And by the way, I'm really pleased with this small anvil. I mean, really happy with this one. So um, today I'm just going to fire up the forge because my wife wants me to make her a quick uh, L bracket uh, just to hang a new mop that she bought. So I'll, I'll make a video of that right now and show, and show that. Um, one other thing I wanted to show, let me come get the camera. One other thing I wanted to show is a lot of times when I make small items, I just, uh, Taiwan's weather is so humid. You can see today's a rainy day, and I like to just leave stuff out in the rain to rust. I mean, I don't always want a rusted finish, but I feel that to me it's, it's unique and, and pleasing. So if you'll recall in a, in a video, maybe not too long ago, I made this, uh, this J hook. And you can see just by leaving it out here, how it's, it's severely rusted and pitted even already. So I'm just going to continue to leave that there. And this piece I made, I don't know when, just a small cross and uh, sitting out here rusting away. So, yeah, that's something to think about. If you uh, live in a place where it's not as humid as, as Taiwan and where, you know, it wouldn't be so quick, it wouldn't rust pieces so quickly, there's other ways to get them to, to get that oxidized look. And one method that I've used in the past is to uh, put a piece in white vinegar and leave it in that, in, basically it's a weak acid, and leave the piece in, uh, submerge it in white vinegar, leave it for a day or two or even three, and then when you remove it, it'll inst it should instantly rust. And, and then that'll kickstart the process. So, yeah, anyway, uh, let me fire up the forge and we'll get working on this quick L bracket and, uh, and that's that. I think I'm going to turn this anvil upside down and, and use it from the bottom end. Um, that's one of the reasons I don't like to uh, have my anvils tied down is I often move them around quite a bit. But I, I very rarely use this one from the bottom end, but I use the suede sides quite a bit. So. Today I'm also going to, use, going to use an older hammer that I have made quite a while ago and the, the handle is just shaped beautifully on this one. It's a very old piece of wood. So we'll use that hammer today. And then for material, I'd, I'd probably like to make this simple bracket out of 3 8 square, but I don't have any of that on hand, so we'll just use this short length of uh, 12 millimeter round, which I have tons of. This and half inch round. Actually, this might be half inch. No, 12 millimeter probably. Okay.
note <clears throat> this uh, handle punch I always use for my tongs for uh, punching the holes for rivets but it's 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 a little bit too thick on the business end for smaller stuff like this bracket so you know I've always sometimes just made a very fine punch and use that but I've just been frustrated when I I don't often do other small projects like this so when I do do things like this to show you guys. I don't have the proper punch, this fine, fine enough punch that's handled like I like, but fear not, because I had this one machined, so you can see it's much finer. This one has been <clears throat> reground so many times, you can see how much it used to be this long. So, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, so this one is about, at the business end, is about four millimeters, and it tapers much more gently, it tapers up much higher. So. When I get a chance, I'll handle this. This is also uh, D2 steel, and uh, I just I like to have these tools machined because how can I do such a good job like that? How can I make it as perfectly round as that? You know, so I'll uh, I'll get that done, and I'll be using that one in when I need to punch smaller holes in the future. Ask me where I'm going with this. This is freestyle mode right now. I'm just gonna put a twist in it, and I don't know why I was just banging on it on the edge there. And I'm gonna do that again and put those indents in better than what I just did. Another reason why I like these uh, my bent knee style tongs is just for that reason there. Once I've changed the shape of this, I'm still able to grasp it a little farther up, right there, or anywhere along the line there.
probably blocking this, but you get the idea. Like I said, this is kind of freestyle mode right now. Very artistic. <laughs> Actually, I like this so far. You know, for things like this that I make just to show you guys, or maybe my wife wants, you know, something quickly made. I just, I don't usually plan things out, I just do it, because it's not a crucial piece. If it's something for my work, something that I sell, of course I carefully think things, think things out and, and get them done, you know, to the way I want it to be, and the, the way a customer expects it to be. But for my own use, sometimes experimenting and you become very surprised by what you make. I mean, look at this. I guess it's abstract art. It actually, to me, looks very interesting. You know, now if I give, after when this is finished, if I give this the rusted look, it'll look like it came off a, a Spanish galleon buried deep in the Atlantic Ocean. All right, enough, enough crazy talk. Back to the work. There it is, the L, the simple L bracket in all its its final uh, abstract art glory. Um, I'm actually happy to make pieces like this when it's just it has. I know it can definitely serve its function, which is my wife just wants to uh, hang them up uh, a, a, away from the wall a bit so that the head doesn't touch the wall and, and obviously the head doesn't touch the floor. So you can't argue with a working woman. So uh, that'll serve the purpose. And I probably, I like the, the finish as it is right now, but I think maybe even the, uh, if I give it the sunken Spanish galleon look and, and let it rust up out here, that might even be uh, better. So, yeah, we'll see. I mean, you don't always have to have a plan when you go about hammering. Sometimes you can just freestyle it and just practice different techniques. Don't be afraid to experiment. Not everything comes out successfully, but sometimes you'd be very surprised. So, again, you know, keep it simple. Learn the basics. Uh, you know, hammer technique is everything. So um, you might have the greatest tooling in the world, but if you don't have proper technique, then uh, you'll find that your projects won't come out to your satisfaction. Until next time, thanks.